Well, hello and welcome. My name is Dan Murray, the CEO of Opportunity International Canada. And on behalf of the Opportunity Canada team, and especially our partners and clients around the world, it is my honor to welcome each of you to our Business with Social Purpose webinar. Thank you for taking the time to join us for this important conversation. To quote from a recent blog post from Scotiabank, we've seen a broader corporate shift globally as companies increasingly look beyond revenue streams and the specific products or services they provide and focus on the role they can play within their economies and society overall. This is a very timely discussion, especially given the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic and Opportunity Canada is honored to help facilitate this dialogue today. You know, it is possible to make a huge difference. Thanks to the support of several companies with social purpose, as well as individuals, foundations, and some government funding, today more than 17 million people have access to financial services. 5.5 million use digital banking with cell phones in rural communities, and 5.2 million children have the opportunity of a quality education. Our partners and clients have been hit hard by the economic crisis of this pandemic in their own communities. And Opportunity Canada is committed to standing with them firmly now so that they can thrive into the future. You know, microfinance was one of the most strategic and sustainable pathways out of poverty before the pandemic started. And it will prove to be one of the best ways to regain the lost ground in the fight against global poverty post pandemic. I'd like to offer a special thank you to Peggy Pelosi and sharing her expertise and passion with us today, to the panelists for generously sharing of their experiences, and to each of you for taking the time to join us. And at this point, I will turn the webinar over to my colleague and your host, Caroline Munshaw. Thanks so much, Dan. It is my absolute delight to host this conversation. Business with social purpose is at the core of opportunity. Our innovative, our clients are innovative entrepreneurs working their way out of poverty. And we've heard countless stories about clients employing their neighbors and spearheading positive change in their communities. Clients like Linda, who runs a bakery in Ghana that epitomizes business with social purpose. Linda started by baking bread in a small oven at home selling from a basket at the top of her head about 40 loaves of bread a day. Her goal was to one day open a bakery. She tried to find a financial institution that would give her a startup loan, but was unsuccessful until she was introduced to Opportunity International. With her first Opportunity loan in 2012, Linda bought two more ovens. Fast forward to the end of 2019, Linda operated two bakeries employing 63 people and baking over, get this, 6,600 loaves of bread a day. And to find her employees, Linda advertises in local villages because she's passionate about helping people in her neighborhood find an income, earn an income. She's also partnered with 80 young women in her village who said sell bread to local stores. She wants to employ more women and girls because as she says, when you help a girl, you help a nation. So not only does Linda's business provide an income for so many, she has built housing on the property for her employees. Her business has created countless benefits for her community. We also have a number of corporate partners here in Canada that also run businesses with social purpose. And I'd like to introduce you to some of them now. Okay, we are just missing one of them, but she'll be, she'll be on. So first off, Peggy Pelosi, CEO of Arenda. We also have, hello, Peggy. We also have Ryan Kononoff, um, CEO of Clearbridge. We have Stan Pauls, CEO of Decor Cabinets. You know, I gotta take time for people to wave, here we go. And Shauna Pereira and Tara Cochran, co-founders of Wonderkind. I'd like to start off with, we'll start off with a panel discussion led by Peggy, who is a longtime friend and partner of Opportunity and a thought leader in the area of social purpose, followed by Q&A. If you have questions, you just need to click that little button at the bottom that says Q&A at the bottom of your screen, and we'll do our best to answer all of those questions, making sure that we finish up within the hour. The webinar is being recorded, 
and we'll send you a recording of this session afterwards as well along with the contact information of all of our panelists and opportunity staff. So I'll now ask Peggy to start us off. Thank you so much for the great introduction to both Dan and Caroline. Um, I'm really grateful to everyone that's here, especially these panelists, to share their stories with you. I loved hearing about business, Linda's business experience. Um, always so inspiring. But we're here to, do, to share in the discussions around something that's so near and dear to my heart and a passion of mine, which is social purpose. So before we get going, just a quick sort of introduction to that uh, um, and how I, I landed here. 20 years ago, I was in my mid 40s and I was working as what would today be referred to as a chief sales officer or chief revenue officer for a, a US based company that's in the nutritional a health and wellness industry. And during a discussion with the chairman and CEO in 2000, I was challenged with the very unique opportunity to look at how we could evolve the company's philanthropic commitments into a much more strategic community investment initiative. I didn't know what I didn't know about uh, community investment, um, but I forged ahead with a new excitement and interest and passion and a yearning to discover how to help, the biz how, how to help this business change the world. Three years later, we developed an extraordinary partnership with an NGO working on sustainable solutions to hunger, and we'd woven our commitment to social good into the fabric of the corporate culture. Our top line revenue had more than doubled during that time, and the share of value had increased by over 3,000%. That growth was not a result so much of a market change or some spectacular sales strategy. It was a direct result of a shift in corporate culture we'd become a very caring company. And that caring cascaded from the top down through every department. We began to attract great talent, retain that talent, productivity increased, customer trust, satisfaction, and loyalty increased. It was very good for business. And we began to see how that commitment was impacting the health and wellness of thousands, today tens of thousands of children and families around the world through our contributions of financial donations, in-kind product donations, micronutrients, volunteer time, and, and, and a lot of intellectual talent. We also dramatically impacted the lives of thousands of our employees and other stakeholders around the world as they rolled up their sleeves, linked arms, and went to work in their communities and beyond, having discovered the value of purpose in their own life. It was five years after the launch of that program that the penny dropped for me. I realized I had much more work to do. I launched a consulting practice in 2005 with the mission of driving social change by helping businesses discover their social purpose. And a vision of a movement of cross-sector collaborations that drive innovations, innovative solutions to our most challenging social issues. And that vision, I'm happy to say, is alive and well and getting clearer every day. I had the great fortune of crossing paths with Opportunity Canada many years ago, not long after I began Arenda, in fact, and I've continued to be so inspired that the work that they do every day, like that Linda story, creating a world where financial inclusivity means a world in which all people have the opportunity to achieve a life free from poverty. And they do that by being, an opportunity does that by being an engine of entrepreneurship in the developing world. So we're here today to discuss social purpose, what it is, why it's important, and how a business can discover theirs and execute. And we've got some great panelists here to bring this to life for you. But before we get to them, I just want to talk to you about this, the definition, like what is social purpose? What is it and how does it relate to business? At Arenda, we believe that when creating a more sustainable world is an ultimate reason for being for a company, it has a social purpose. It's an engine for good, creating value for all stakeholders by the very act of conducting business. So Andrew, if I could ask you to put up that slide, we'll have a very quick look at how this has evolved. This slide shows the evolution from corporate philanthropy 
through corporate social responsibility, strategic community investment, to ultimately a place of social purpose and the relative impact that that evolution has on the culture of an organization. You know, it goes from a transactional sort of uh, philanthropic, uh, it, it, it is transactional. And it's a company that's decided that it's going to, to make a contribution to the community and, and, and that is the end of that piece of it. Um, going through this transitional phase of where we move into sort of a, a commitment to corporate social responsibility, maybe identifying some strategic community investment and looking at how we can engage our, our employees in it. That's that trans transitional moment. When it ultimately gets to this transformational place of social purpose, the company has identified that the, the reason for being is to make the world a better place, regardless of the business that they're in. And it's done through, through so many areas. It can be through, through operations, looking at, at the environmental impact that the company is having, whether it's carbon or, or energy or water or um, anything, that the recycling that the company is doing. It can be through their HR department and and what they're doing around diversity, inclusion, and belonging in HR, it starts to, the social purpose starts to impact the decisions that the company is making. And that's when it becomes very transformational. That large, largely, one of the catalysts for this transformation has been the United Nations uh, Goals for Sustainable Development, that fondly known as the SDGs. Um, and, and they have helped to drive many companies' awareness around how they can ultimately be contributing to a better world. So that's the theory. Now let's get to the good stuff, the juice. Our panel of, of very inspiring small Canadian businesses that have discovered social purpose and baked it into their business cultures. So a really warm welcome to Ryan from Clearbridge out in Abbotsford, BC, Tara and Shauna from Wonderkind right across the street from me here in Toronto, Ontario, and Stan from Decor Cabinets in Morden, Manitoba. I've got some questions for all of you um, and I'm looking forward to it. I, and we're going to, we're, we'll run through them. And then I know audience that you will probably have some questions for some of these panelists too and invite you again, as Caroline said in the Q&A. Um, to just to type in your questions as we're going along so that hopefully we'll and hopefully we'll have time to to get to them all uh, before we're finished. So I'm going to start with uh, Tara and Shauna. Well, and I'll start with Tara from Wonderkind. And I think one of the big questions people have, Tara, is why? What is the why behind your so the social purpose in your business? Well, you know, just reflecting over that, um, you know, I think the why comes from different experiences for everyone. I think that there's this innate uh, part of being human about giving back and, and wanting to give. For some people that comes from being on the receiving side in life, sometimes that comes from something you've, you've witnessed or you've seen and you, you just feel purpose driven to go out and make a difference. For me in particular, it comes from just being so incredibly grateful for the opportunities that came in my life, whether it was, um, community sponsorship, mentorship in the workplace, a phone call when I needed it. And I just look back in my life and I just feel grateful for those opportunities because I wholeheartedly believe that that changed the trajectory of my life, having that kindness sent my shared with me. So I've always been very aware of that. And um, I just, I know that the journey in life starts different for everyone and we don't get to choose. So if we do get to a position where we um, are enabled that we can help each other or that we're in a position we can, I just feel like we should. It's just part of the human, the human DNA. <laughs> so um, when Sean and I met, actually we met on a fundraising committee. I had just spent 10 years in the corporate world uh, and Shauna actually was a freelance photographer, very involved in the community. Um, and we just kind of found that kindred spirit, this connection of how passionate we were about um, fundraising and giving back and connecting others so we could pay it forward for the kindness and that had been shown in our lives and the success that we had been able to work towards and achieve. So we started talking about that and then the dream of Wonderkind came to fruition, but it was, we thought, you know, we can structure a business. We can do this. Like we're passionate about this. This is a service that people need. Gifting is a tradition that's in our lives and we can make it impactful and we can celebrate the vendors and the partners we work with and we can work with charitable partners and we can be a small part of what they're doing. 
And I really encourage small businesses to feel, never feel intimidated about the size of your impact, whether you're helping one person or 500, it, it all matters. So that's how Wonderkind um, came to be. And through the journey, we've been working with our partners and it's enriched us, like working with opportunity and the entrepreneurship there and those similarities. It's just, we're growing and we're gaining so much. And when we talk to our clients and our customers and they learn about the charity work that our partners are doing and what we're doing, we see the sparkle in them. So it really is about circular success. It's about helping each other being successful and implementing that in your business in a way that we can, we can just all have a better quality of life and help each other. Thank you for that. Ryan, what about you? What, what, what's your why for ClearBridge? Um, I, I think we, we look at, so our, our business is very much wrapped around helping our, our customers to, to show up every day empowered to do the best work they've ever done. And a, a big part of that is the human component of uh, putting the right technology and training and, and, and all of that in front of them. But I look at extending that beyond just the technical industry that we're in and, and looking at the world around us and how there are so many capable entrepreneurs in, in, in unfortunate circumstances that, that aren't, um, you, you know, we're, we're all blessed to live in a, in a remarkable part of the world with, with so much opportunity. And, and so I look at the power of, of, uh, uh, of leverage and microfinance and, and, and you know, in, in some of the uh, areas that we're involved, but also just areas where we can be more charitable and, and give back. And, and I see how, not only does that benefit the people that we're, we're, we're giving to or the, whether it's time or our resources, but also our staff, like it, it's a totally different level of fulfillment that, that someone has when they can empower someone else's um, family to uh, create jobs, uh, to uh, create a means for them to, to live and to uh, create a better life for themselves. And so it, it's about giving back to our people. It's about taking, um, you know, what we do every single day and, and, and creating some, some cause there that, that drives people to want to show up to work and to want to be a part of our culture. Um, so we kind of look at it as a, as a, as a win, 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 um, you know, win for our customers, win for our company and, and a win for our people. And I guess a fourth win would be, you know, the win for the world around us. Um, and so, you know, th there's really no reason for us not to be investing in, in this way. It's just uh, such a powerful, um, so, so, such a powerful way to, uh, to give back is to get, you know, so to, to get your culture and, and your people involved in, in, uh, in a cause that, that, uh, that they believe in. Yeah, that's so great. And listening to both you and Tara talk about the sort of baking this into the, the fabric of the culture of your business. Um, it is really what I'm starting to realize or, or, or observe is that the, the new entrepreneurship, this is just a, you know, it's just, it, it is a way of being. It's not an afterthought. It's not something that you're going, oh, this is something we have to do. It's just part of who you are as you build your businesses. And it's so inspiring to observe. So great. I mean, you know, back in the day when I was starting to do this and just, you know, banging on the door of CEOs and saying, please, you need to understand the value of doing this. This is something that you as young entrepreneurs just really get. Um, so it's, I'm grateful for that. And Stan, I'm going to turn it over to you. Not that that was an, you know, an intentional segue into, into the, us older generation of entrepreneurs. <laughs> <laughs> it was not, but I mean, so, so tell us the story of decor and why this, why social purpose? What is your why? The why is, uh, I mean, just like Tara and, and Ryan have said, We've been so abundantly blessed. We, we're very fortunate to live in a country and in a place where we can, uh, yeah, we experience many, many blessings, right? Uh, and so um, quite a few years ago, I read a book called The Treasure Principle by Randy Alcorn. And he talks about the fact that uh, we, we are blessed and what, are we, are, we are, what should we be doing with that? And uh, we will be held accountable for that. So I said, I wanted to be faithful. And uh, so that's why that started it. But I think right now for me, uh, we as leaders, 
uh, we want to impact or influence people's lives. And so we start with our families and then it goes to our employees. We all have employees. Um, and then we can influence our vendors and our, our customers um, and make a positive influence or impact. And then, I, you know, we started the whole idea of if we can uh, influence others beyond that. And when you start to give uh, through OI or, or other organizations that are doing it, now we're impacting, we added a couple more thousand people. And then, and then maybe it's 100,000 people. So it just kept on growing. So I think that's the, the excitement of it, that we can be in our offices, we can be in our businesses, and we can really have a positive impact you know, everywhere. Um, so that, that's, that's definitely what drives us. Yeah, that's great. And then again, that commonality of the why, it is just about uh, yeah. caring. It's about caring cultures. Um, so thank you so much for that. Now, listen, well, we're going to get into some really interesting stuff around the how you're doing it. And I'm going to go back to Wonderkind here and ask Shauna to share with us a little bit about how you are embedding this idea of social purpose into Wonderkind. So Tara and I are both natural gifters. It's we're wired to give and, and to give, give a lot. So we wanted to create something that we could gift and gift with purpose. So in, in that, with that in mind, we thought we could build this platform that's integral part of our business where when you purchase a wonder kind, part of the proceeds go to support our charitable par our partners. And so what happens, the how is our customers, they will purchase a wonder kind they uh, then go on and they at checkout, they are able to select uh, one of our charitable partners. From there, they're able to uh, read more information about, about the partner, our charitable partner in more detail. And if they would like to go on and learn some more, they can follow the link forward. From there, when we package and wrap their wonder kind, we always include in the set a, a charitable partner card. So it goes on and it explains a little bit more information about who their product is supporting. And from there, our, through our various social platforms, we're always encouraging and um, posting different events and information and fundraisers and just what our, what our charity, charitable partners are, are doing and what they're doing in their community and how they're raising awareness. And attending events like this for Tara and I is a big part of our social giving back as well. Uh, we do a lot of webinars like this. Uh, we will attend events. We participate in fundraisers for our char charitable partners. So our, we're not only giving in terms of gifting with purpose, we are also giving in terms of awareness and giving back to the organizations that we're really proud to support. That's great. That's great. And Ryan, what about you? How do you do this? How do you bring it to life? We, we've, we've tried a couple of things over the years. Um, our, our real first shot at it was something we call our, our Christmas mission. And it's a tradition that we, we continue uh, to invest in. And it started out with a simple $100 bill um, in, uh, in, in an envelope for every one of our employees and a and a mission for them to go do something with that for someone else that they wouldn't have otherwise done if they hadn't been gifted that hundred dollar bill. And um, this is, has been uh, an opportunity to create some really valuable experiences for our people, as well as for our organization. It's kind of got people excited about, you know, the, the responses and the reactions and, and just the feeling of, of, of giving. Um, and it's something we, we continue every year. We kind of step back and say, okay, well, what are we going to do this year that's a little bit different um, that, that can help us to, to not to level up, but, but to improve and increase uh, that experience. Um, and so, you know, the stories that come out of that are just, uh, they're heartwarming. Um, and they're, they're, everyone has, you know, a different mission in life. They have different organizations that they're, they're, they're connected with. And, uh, and so we get to hear, hear from those. Uh, uh, every every year, and it's it's really uh, remarkable. Um, last year, we partnered with uh, uh, Opportunity International. We we created the one to many um, cause internally, and uh, and that's been um, a, a really rewarding experience. It came at an interesting time. We had plans to to go visit 
physically to take our people to, to visit and to see um, the work that was being done uh, through the microfinance opportunities that we were a part of uh, through lending to, uh, to entrepreneurs in the, in the developing or developed world and seeing the, uh, and hearing the stories. And, we, you know, we heard a story uh, similar to, to, to what we're hearing as a company uh, this, uh, at the beginning of this, this webinar. And for us, you know, that's been a really valuable and important part of, of what we're doing, um, seeing how, um, how capital can be levered and relent and, and can, can not just impact one person um, like that $100 bill, but, but can impact many, many people over the course of time. So those are just two of the ways that we've built that into uh, our culture. And it's, you know, the, the first one I, I gave as an example, that's something every single person at, at ClearBridge has the opportunity to participate in. We, we give them the choice, but we've never had someone uh, say, no, I'm, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't, I, I don't want to be part of that. I think everyone, uh, uh, you know, thrives on that opportunity. And, uh, and, and we're looking, you know, we're always looking for, for other opportunities to, uh, to, to give back in whatever way that looks like. That's great. Thanks, Ryan. And over to you, Stan, asking you the same question. How do you do this at Decor Cabinets? Well, we do it in, in numerous ways. So with our uh, employees, we started this a while back. We made some small children's tables and chairs. Um, we've slowed that up a little bit, but I think we're going to get it going again because yesterday I had someone come in, saw it, and he's, he's a grandpa and says, I want a set of those tables and chairs. So what we did was the employees would come in on Saturday and make these small tables and chairs and paint them, finish them, and then we would give 100% uh, of the, the money, whatever we got for the tables and chairs to um, opportunity in this case and, and it definitely made a difference so we, we knew that every one of those sets gave a loan right so that was that was really cool and what I thought it was really important is that if people could give their time you know we can all be um, saying well my company does this but there's nothing like it when we sacrifice our own time so I come in my Saturday morning and I'll do some work and make a difference in someone's life so I sacrifice a little bit of my time so that, to me that's important um, with our customers, we, we do lots of matching. So if they're working, uh, doing some project, and they know once the word got out that this is important to us, uh, we will match uh, what they're giving away too, uh, whether it's you know, product, um, things like that. So that is, that's really been a special thing. And, um, and then with our vendors, we put on like uh, golf tournaments and things, and they always get behind us. So. Uh, even going back to tables and chairs, they donated the, the material for the tables, the, our packaging people donated the packaging. So uh, what we find over and over again, if we just give others an opportunity to, to get, on, get involved, it uh, doesn't matter how small or large the opportunity is, people want to get involved. They just don't know that they can. And once they have um, understood that, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. I took away something, that $100 bill. That's a cool idea, Ryan. I hadn't thought of that. I, even old guys can learn something new. Oh, that's so great. Thank you. And I'm sorry, I got a little bit distracted there because I'm getting this message from my computer that my connection is unstable. So I'm just going to turn off my video to try and uh, free up some bandwidth. I hope, Ryan, is that the right thing for me to be doing? <laughs> you're, our, you're our tech person. <laughs> sure. That's just perfect. Okay, great. Uh, hopefully that, that all that interruption will go away. But, um, you know, a couple more things. So I know, I know, Sean and Tara, you are a two person two two gal show right now. But Ron, both Ryan and Stan, you've got other people that were, you've got employees, you've got people that, that are you're working with. Do they get involved? Do they participate in the decisions around what the company is going to do around its social purpose? Are you involving them in it um, so that they can come with ideas? Are they creative and, and coming up with ideas? Ryan, can I ask you that? Yeah, well, the, the first, um, you know, our Christmas mission is a, is a great example of that, where they are in complete control. They have total autonomy as to how those funds are, are deployed. Um, so in that case, yes, we say, here's the money, go do something um, for someone else uh, or some other entity. And, and, and then we, we give them the opportunity to share that story um, with, with the team. Um, as far as, you know, other opportunities, I mean, we're, oh, 
did you? I heard an uh oh from Peggy. Can you oh, hear? Yeah, can everyone hear me? Here. I'm still okay, here. Okay, <laughs> maybe we just lost Peggy. Um, but for you know, for other uh, like our opportunity international partnership with One to Many, um, that's something we have everyone involved in. Um, that's a little bit of a bigger cause and, and a bigger investment on our part. And uh, uh, we've grown a lot. You know, we we've our our team count has grown. 300% since we started that, uh, that initiative. And so um, as, as we move forward, you know, we're going to have to look at how we can involve people in, in those discussions at a, at a higher level. Um, but that one was an example where, where that was something I just believe in. That was, that was a, a, a personal mission of mine and seeing the opportunity that, that leverage uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, th that that can bring to an entrepreneur as far as borrowing, starting a business, hiring employees, um, uh, but other, you know, other things that we get involved in, uh, we're certainly open to, to ideas and collaboration. Hopefully you heard that, Peggy. Yeah, no, I, I'm still here. I'm happy to say I'm still here with you. Uh, Stan, quickly to you also, I mean, you've got a large, you've got a large group of people working with you. Um, how do you involve them in uh, the decisions around how the company is going to show up? So, so some of the projects, uh, we have a group of people that have, have decided uh, what project they wanted to go on, especially the one with Opportunity International. Uh, just two weeks ago, uh, one of the departments, they wanted to help a local uh, shelter, a uh, lady shelter here. So they had a bake sale and uh, they collected a bunch of items for them. And uh, I love it when uh, you can't stop this thing, right? They did this on their own. I, I stumbled upon the bake sale. I guess must have smelled the cooking. and. Uh, got involved that way but they, they they did this on their own they worked at uh, volunteered their time this whole department and worked at a soup kitchen and things so we're always trying to get some feedback from them of course my favorite is i love the the micro loan thing it's it's business and it's just fun to see this money going over and over again but i'm sure not going to stop when they're when they when they uh, decide to do something together the, the, their work family gets together and decides if they want to make a make a difference and that's really cool that's great, thank you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to Sean and Tara here with a question and, and either one of you or both of you can respond to this. But I, I mean, I know this question comes up for me a lot when people are looking at um, how they're, you know, whatever the social issue is that they decide to embrace and, and, and commit to. Um, deciding between local and international and how you make, Make that decision. So, you know, we're kind when we're looking at this. Uh, Opportunity International does work in the developing world, which is so important and needed. How did you make that decision to to support an organization that's in the developing world versus one that's local? Do you want me to take that one, Shana? Sure, I'll follow up. Okay. Um, so, well, there's a, diff a few different things there. I mean, we do um, wholeheartedly, you know, want to support our communities and very passionate about local products and Canadian made products. But we're also very passionate about, about entrepreneurship. And when we started to learn about Opportunity International and the work that they were doing, it just went hand in hand with what we had in our hearts. And we are very fortunate to live where we are and have the opportunities. And in our minds, there's there's just no way that we that we could not, um, we wanted to help locally, but we do want to help internationally. We are very privileged to live here and if we can give back. Um, I was very fortunate in my early 20s. I went to South Africa and I know you talk about this, Peggy, in your book as well as there's something about that experience that always is with you and that's always stayed with me. So yes, I'm incredibly passionate about Made in Canada and local merchants and communities and we are wholeheartedly supporting that. But I also, on behalf of Sean and I, we both have talked about this and, and that's our partnership with Opportunity. We want to pay it forward and be able to help with entrepreneurs around the world as well. And just to follow up on what Tara said, I feel that our parallel to Opportunity in terms of our business is similar. In terms of, we work with over 130 small businesses from a, and big, medium-sized businesses from across Canada. So we're working with them the more product the more wonder kinds that we're able to sell the more product we're able to buy from our vendors which then helps build their businesses up and from that point the that the more wonder kind we sell that gives back more to our to our charitable partners because that just increases the the a the awareness and b they're able to choose um 
where they're they're gifting with purpose goes. So they're it's we feel it's a it's a nice balance between or comparison between both. Excellent. Uh, Ryan or Stan, did you want to c contribute to that conversation too about that, you know making that distinction between uh, local and international? Ryan. I'll, I'll jump in on that. I, I think there's there's an importance to do both. Um, there's there's great needs here, um, you know, right right here in Abbotsford, which is where we're based out of, um, all across the country, and and I and I think there's also great needs globally. And so I think you know our 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 vision there is to be doing both and um, to be investing um, uh, globally, but also to be looking for opportunities locally throughout the year. Uh, as, as well as, you know, our Christmas mission is a great example of, of where a large majority of our staff are contributing locally uh, to causes that, uh, that they're sometimes physically connected with. You know, it might be in their, their community, it might be something um, that, you know, is, is working with their family, uh, you know, children's hospital or, or different things like that. So I think uh, for us, it's, it's about finding ways to do both, not one or the other. Yeah, great. And Stan, it sounds like you've got the same thing happening where you're making, you know, Opportunity International is a chosen partner that employees have the opportunity to go and, and create some things on their own locally. Yes, I, I, I agree. I think it's important to do, to, to do both. I also think it's important to, um, you know, the ones that you're aware of, like the ones that you feel a connection to, uh, I don't know how to describe it, uh, we have limited resources and even if we live in a land of abundance we still have limited resources and we want to make sure we maximize the impact so um, I, I, I remind myself I want to make sure that uh, when I give it's 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 given I don't have to I don't have to look after that anymore that's that's their choice but I also want to make sure that I'm giving it places and where it has has a maximum impact I don't want to um, I don't want our employees to sacrifice their time and efforts for something that uh, you know isn't isn't having, like I said, maximum impact. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you all so much. I think it's or I, I mean, for the audience to ask us some questions, we could ask. I, 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 do you agree? Is it time for us to let some others get their questions in? Sure, sounds great. We've got a few here. Um, so the first one um, that is from, it's actually from Western Canada. So I thought, Stan, I would ask this um, of you. It was, what was your most memorable feedback comments from customers? So we've talked about employees a little bit. So talking about customers uh, regarding your social purpose initiatives. So anything you've heard, anything memorable to share and what, how customers have gotten engaged in this? How oh, customers have? Um, so uh, naturally, we, I mean, by our name, we build kitchen cabinets, right? And so our customers are uh, involved with Habitat for Humanity or numerous organizations like that. And so it's, I always want to know what their, what their involvement is. Like, is it a real personal involvement or is just someone knocking on the door? I think that goes back to what I was just saying. It, it, there has to be some kind of a connection. Um, I, I, you know, we get inundated with people asking for money every day. But if you can, if you can get that personal connection is, is really you know, really critical. So yeah, we've, we've partnered with our customers, even when they did things that weren't anything to do with kitchens, right? They were doing something in Cambodia. And so they showed us what they were doing and it was fun. And uh, yeah, I love partnerships. It's, it's uh, this whole thing about matching. We do lots of matching grants, um, a really good friend and a, to me, a mentor. I look up to him a lot. Uh, he showed me the power of that, right? So uh, to, to do the matching, um, donations so that's yeah fantastic we all love a match that's always uh that's a great incentive um ryan would you mind answering that question as well about the customers i think it might be this kind of neat to hear from each of you so um oh i can read the question again if you like what was your most memorable feedback comments from customers regarding your social purpose initiatives yeah it's you know our our company has grown quite a bit uh, recently and so I as far as specific feedback from customers I, I can't think of anything specifically that 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 comes to mind that I can share um, today uh, I think 
you know, we, we've had some vendors with some feedback, uh, you know, so maybe, maybe I can share about that. Um, you know, our, our vendors, we see them as a huge support mechanism for our business and, and the work that we are doing. And we've had vendors come to us and say, how can we get involved? How can we participate or, you know, come to us and let us know if, if, uh, uh, if you need help. Um, and, you know, some of them, you know, found uh, uh, like our, our one to many launch, you know, was, was really um, uh, something that they, they just connected with. And so that, that level of, of feedback has helped us, has helped guide us, has helped affirm that, yeah, we're making, you know, some, some good decisions here. Um, and, uh, um, yeah, but nothing, nothing yet from customers, but it's something that we are starting to look at how we can bake that into our, um, our renewal process with our customers when we sit down and, and revisit contracts and actually talking to them about the, the impact that their choice of, of doing business with us is, is having on a, on a local or global, uh, level. Okay. Terrific. Thanks. Shauna and Tara, would you like to jump in if you had any? Any comments about, about that? Uh, well, I think one of the things that we've experienced a lot of with our customers is the sharing experience. So we've been hearing from like our recipients, uh, they'll receive a wonder kind. And when they find out that their gift is supporting a charitable partner, I feel there's a real, um, a, a real lift in that, in that spirit. And we will see them sharing through social media. You know, my dear friend sent me this gift and it supports, you know, uh, Opportunity National or a, a charitable partner. And so we're, we're seeing it more from an experience level that just that, that wanting to share um, where that connection is and where their gift is supporting. And we've actually had some of our clients come to us and say, I'm thinking of doing this event and I know that you work with charitable partners and that, you know, my, my, my order, my purchase will support them. So it's really from the, um, the experience that we're seeing and, um, and also just um, the, yeah, just really people sharing. Fantastic. Love it. Oh, we got a few more coming in here. Um, um, Ryan, um, I think this is a great one for you. Um, do you have ways that you are thinking about that you can measure the social impact that you're making, that you're like Clear Bridge is making? Yeah, I think, I think uh, me measuring uh, with, with a degree of, of tested accuracy may, may be a difficult one, but what we, do, what we are doing uh, or have done is I, I talked a little bit earlier about our Christmas mission and how we get to hear those stories from, from our people. Um, and so we've taken the opportunity to actually document those stories and to uh, get our get our people on camera sharing uh, their their version of what happened uh, or what what the impact looked like not only for them but for the organization or cause that they were behind and so for, for us that's a that's a measuring opportunity where we get to see the emotions spill out and and the excitement and the smiles and and you know for we, we ask that our people, not uh, not uh, share with other employees, you know, what they've done. We kind of try to keep it hush hush so that, you know, we, we have that first opportunity to, to see those stories and, and see the excitement uh, uh, spill out. And, and that's something we, uh, this year, actually, we will be uh, releasing uh, uh, one of those stories publicly in, in December. We're really excited about, uh, about sharing that, uh, that, that video um, uh, as one of our employees tells her story of, of the Christmas mission. So that's our way of, of measuring the impact. Again, it's not, you know, it's, it's perhaps not based on numbers, uh, more based on, on smiles and emotion and perhaps tears, but, uh, you know, that's something that uh, we, we believe works effectively uh, with, with what we're doing. Fantastic. Love it. Power of story. Love it. Uh, someone's asked here if we've engaged, if any of you have engaged your suppliers so we talked customers, uh, Ryan talked about um, vendors. Is there anyone else that wanted to jump in thinking about how you've engaged your suppliers in your social purpose? Stan, do you uh, Sure. Okay, thanks. I just talked a little bit about the measures. So uh, last year, uh, one of the projects we were involved in created 400 and some loans, which uh, created over 1,100 new jobs. So that was uh, the, the people that got these loans got, so for me, that's a, that's a number of thing, and definitely I agree. There's it's the smiles and the imp the other impact, but uh, it's, many of the things can be measured as well as far as far as numbers are concerned. Getting our vendors involved when they see that what we're doing, we have uh, vendors 
really writing out a check. Like we give them, we tell them the stories, tell them what we're involved in. Um, and, and it's, it's really been quite easy and very rewarding uh, on both sides, I believe. And uh, I, I think it's, uh, yeah, you, sometimes you just have to ask, give them the opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Give them the opportunity, love it. <laughs> um, I have a great question here. What is your dream for your social purpose? So we talked about the why and the how, I'm gonna be looking into the future. So the dream for your social purpose. I feel like with WonderCon, maybe Tara and Shauna, would you like to, Tara, would you like to answer that one? Sure. Um, I think, you know, Shauna touched on this a little bit earlier, but I mean, our, our dream really is to um, just create that expansion opportunity for our, our, our business and our vendors. So, you know, just over this past year, um, it's been obviously a very, very difficult year on so many different levels for businesses. And um, Shauna went to pick up an order from one of our vendors who said, uh, thank you so much. You know, you helped me pay my rent this month. <laughs> so I think really success for us is just, you know, that we can keep pouring that, that business and that work into our, our vendors, supporting their businesses. They support their communities. And that just makes us, uh, it's really the fire in our bellies. It's what, you know, really motivates us. And I think that, you know, we really are looking to grow um, and grow our entrepreneurship platform with our vendors and create opportunities for them and really just stay on this mission for meaningful gifting that when people are making those choices on what they're purchasing and what they're giving, that they are thinking about it. And if we, we call that spreading wonder kind, but if that, that is what, what our dream is really is that we are being mindful in our, in our daily, you know, not transactions, but choices and what we're doing and then being able to pay that forward to our communities. And um, so they can grow and they can hire employees and they can expand their brands. Fantastic. Love it. Dreaming. Ryan, do you want to answer that one too? The the dream. Yeah, I, <laughs> um, I, I naturally I'm a bit of a dreamer myself. So um, I think you know every every day I I wake up and and I see a big part of my role at Clearbridge. Uh, in fact, probably the biggest part of my role is how do I inspire people um, to do their best work, to give back, um, to be their best versions of themselves. And, uh, you know, for, for me, you know, the, the, the dream is making it bigger than, 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 than myself, um, you know, as far as, uh, as the causes that we're getting behind, um, you know, Stan talked a little bit about how, how it's bigger than just him. There's, there's a, you know, there, there's a, a group of, of his people that are, you know, behind uh, stewarding the, the causes that, um, you know, the organization is giving to. And, uh, and I think that's, that's my dream, that it becomes a, a bigger thing than, than Ryan. Uh, I started this, um, you know, I started some of these, these ideas, the Christmas mission, you know, one to many, our partnership with Opportunity International. Um, but for me, success in that is when it goes beyond my ideas and, and my capacity to, to come up with, you know, the next, the, you know, the next thing that we get behind. Um, and so then, then the sky is the limit. Um, and I think that's truly what's exciting for me. Awesome, thank you. I can't leave you out, Stan, for the dream. I think we got another, I think we got lots of dreamers here, <laughs> including me and Peggy. Do you mind answering that one too, Stan? Oh, do you want me to answer that? Okay. Um, that's, 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 yeah, I've got um, lots of dreams and that could take a long time. And as I'm sitting here, I'm collecting more ideas of what we could do or impact, but, uh, if you're all right with this, I was just looking at the questions and the question and answer, and someone asked a very hard question that I wish they hadn't, but I'm going to try answering it. And that is to do with what happens if your, your people pick a project that goes against what your personal beliefs are, right? And I think we need to go there. Uh, we have just decided that our projects need to involve people, food, water, you know, those kind of things, the basic shelter, basic necessities but it has to, to deal with making a difference in people's lives. So we know that our environment is really important to us. We have not gotten involved in those kind of uh, things or to do with pets and things. We, we haven't gotten involved in that. But even in the people, it could be different opposing views than my personal views. So I think it would leave, uh, give opportunity to sit down and have a really good discussion. Um, I don't want to ever judge someone's other ideas about how we treat each other. And so we'd, we'd have a great discussion. And at the, day, at the end of the day, I, I, 
you know, I, I hope they know that they're understood and listened to and uh, cared about. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, I really like the fact that I could discuss something then with someone. If they, if they came, to, came to me without, that had something to do that was different than my personal beliefs. Excellent. Thanks for tackling a tough one too. We have another tough one. I'm going to read it. Let's see. Um, we'll see. I'll, get, I'll read it first so we have a chance to think about it and see who can answer it. We've spoken about corporate responsibility, but rarely do we speak about charity responsibility. How can we enter into a robust conversation so we are holding charities to the same standard as corporations in their ability to steward their resources for the greater good? Peggy, what about you? Would you like to? I think that might be a good one for you if you're up for that. It is a, it is a great question. And it's very timely. Um, in the in a wake of you know charitable crisis in Canada, with the fortunate uh, experience that we've had with the We Charity, and no, I'm not passing judgment. I just I uh, think that a lot of uh, donors have that gave them a little bit of whiplash and they thought you know what how do i know if a charity is stewarding our donations in a responsible manner and um you know there's supposed to be a whole lot of checks and balances around that around you know financial statements being um, available to all to, to the public around charitable um organizations but i think it um to whoever answers the question, I think that there needs to be the same kind of movement in the charitable world, and I don't live in it, so I don't know if it exists or not, but this has been a movement that's happened in the corporate world, and it's been a movement that's been driven by stakeholders, not by owners. It's come, I mean, I know as an entrepreneur myself, talk, and been working with so many business owners owners and business CEOs, that the pressure that they have got received from their various stakeholders, largely their employees and their customers, in saying, we want to do business with and work for a company that is, has a social consciousness and is taking everything into effect. You know, it's really about, you know, we, we, we talk about capitalism and it, you know, capitalism was always thought, always thought to be about the shareholder. But it is now, it's this movement from shareholder capitalism to stakeholder capitalism. And if companies are not taking all of their stakeholders support them as uh, employees, as customers, as wh whoever that stakeholder group is. And, you know, it, it probably takes a movement, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's one that has, is underway if it didn't exist before within the nonprofit and charity world um, saying we need to uh, be, and the pressure from donors and the pressure from recipients of the generosity and of the good, good intention of that, that charity to say, we wanna make sure that, that the, the charity is um, uh, operating in not just a, you know, an, uh, transparent way, a very ethical way that works for us. And so as donors, I think it's up to every donor to do their own due diligence um, and, and make that decision for themselves. Um, so I, I don't, I mean, I don't know if there's anything, if there's a group out there or if there's a movement afoot out there to do it, but I think that is what it takes. It's always from that external pressure that change happens. Right? So I don't know if anybody else has got anything to add to that. I just wanted to add the name of an organization. It's called Charity Intelligence. Oh, yeah. And they, they submit a list. They do a lot of um, due diligence and they submit uh, their top impact charities. And there's a whole, a, whole thing, a whole list of things that they're looking at. So that's an external um, source. So for sure, our own research and talking to, other, talking to other donors. But it's great to know that there's an external source that's, that's evaluating that as well. So it's called Charity And, and it's good to have the source evaluating it, but it's the pressure. It's the, it's the movement that's needed to get people to do, you know, to, to, for, for charities to really understand they're being watched. Yeah, exactly, for sure. 
Okay, we are we still have more questions, but we're running out of time. So we've got um, we've got them all here. So we'll be sure to answer those afterwards. Um, I just wanted to thank everybody on our uh, panel today, Ryan, Shauna, Tara, Peggy, and Stan. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your insights today. I love, I was thinking about how our partnership with each of you is different and I love that. It's uh, very unique um, and I, I just love the partnership that we have with you. And I love um, that you're talking about it's a way of being. I feel with all of you, um, business with social purpose really is a way of being and it's just, it's just delightful. So thank you for being with us and sharing your insights. We're particularly grateful that you've also agreed to uh, connect with those on the webinar if they have questions afterwards about your initiatives or maybe you would like to do business with you. Uh, that we've got your contact information we'll share so thanks so much for for being open to talking to people afterwards we're so thankful for your partnership your companies really are making a huge impact in entrepreneurs that are working their way out of poverty so thank you for your partnership as well and thank you for our audience uh, for participating and for all these awesome some very tough questions too um, if you're interested in exploring how you can incorporate social purpose into your business and perhaps thinking about a, considering a partnership with Opportunity, uh, please connect with me and I'll be sure to connect you with the appropriate person in your province or across the country. I'll make sure to connect with you. So do you remember Linda? We started off with talking about Linda. Because of the lockdowns in Ghana as a result of COVID, she has had to let go all but 17, we'll call of her 63 employees. Mm -hmm. And instead of working with 80 vendors, she's only able to work with five. So those people that she was able to help for, help them earn an income through her business are now coming to her asking if she can spare some bread to feed her families, to feed their families. So we are very, very aware of the pressures that are on our clients right now. We know it's, there are a lot of pressures in, um, in uh, companies in Canada, but our partners and our clients um, around the world, there's a lot of pressure and the need has never been greater than it is right now. So we, uh, our team is working really hard. We're going to raise a million dollars between now and the end of the year so that we can stand with clients like Linda to help them thrive as we come through this crisis. So if you're inspired today, if you're excited about uh, helping us with this fundraising initiative, there are a number of ways that you could get involved, transformational ways that you can get involved. Uh, the first is we have a Ride for Refuge that's happening. You'll have to act quickly because it's this Saturday, but we've got opportunity teams uh, that are riding, walking, golfing, um, so you can help get your stakeholders together to uh, help us raise some money that way. You can also join us on October 6th to hear how Opportunities Agriculture Finance Program is fighting extreme poverty. So that's on October 6th, just three days later. You could also engage in an incredible global movement. It's on October 17th and it's a global movement to eradicate poverty. So you can connect with us to find out about all the different initiatives that we have, um, ways that you can engage your customers, vendors, um, and employees to help get behind the work that we're doing. And finally, uh, Ryan talked about the power of story. And so I wanted you to all stay tuned for the launch of our podcast series. It's a Thrive podcast series that will be launching uh, full of beautiful stories to share with all of you. So all this information is found on our website's page, our website events page. And we're always interested in hearing from you directly. A phone call, an email, we'd love to hear from you directly. Um, and so I wanted just to say that we really look forward to partnering with those of you. I wish I could see all of you that were out, uh, that, are, that are listening in. I wish you could see all of you, uh, but we look forward to partnering with you. And we just wanted to say thank you so much for taking the time to join us today.